Okay, so here you have the question and, and it seems to be a very short question. Let's quickly read this. Which of the following is the strongest base? Okay, okay, fine. And KB values at 25 degrees C are given to you for fluoride ion. KB is 1.4 10 to the power minus 11. Ammonia, KB is 1.8 10 to the power minus 5. Hydrazine, KB is 9.5 10 to the power minus 7. And aniline, KB is 4.3 10 to the power minus 10. Okay, these are the values. So let's let's try and understand one thing that what is this KB? How do you how do you like what is the name for KB? The name is base dissociation constant, right? So if 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 the value of KB is high, right? Then what what can you say that dissociation of base is going to be high, right? That's what KB, the value of KB signifies. And if the base is going to dissociate more, then the hydroxide ions, right? Or the concentration of hydroxide ion is going to be more. Okay, this is fine. Now you tell me what is a base? Base is something which provides OH minus ions, right? And a strong base or a strongest base is something which is going to provide more OH minus ions, right? That's what the definition of strongest base or strong base is. That something which gives more hydroxide ion amongst all four of them is going to be the strongest base, right? And for that, for that, the KB value should be highest, okay? So simply what you have to see is the value of KB. 10 to the power minus 11, okay? 10 to the power minus 7, A cannot be the answer. 10 to the power minus 7, C cannot be the answer. And 10 to the power minus 10, D cannot be the answer. I am just comparing the values with 10 to the power what we have. So 10 to the power minus 5, that means ammonia B for Bombay. And fluoride ion is F minus. Ammonia is like NH3. Hydrazine, what is hydrazine basically? This is NH2, single bond NH2 and aniline. This is aromatic compound, a derivative of benzene. This is your aniline, right? So the KB value is given and the highest value of KB is going to give you the strongest base, right? And option B, B for Bombay or B for Bengaluru or even B for base is going to be the right answer to this question. And with that, we conclude this question. Thank you. Yeah. So here we have a graphical question from thermodynamics. Okay, okay. So let's read the statement once. Calculate the total work done along the path ABCD as shown in figure A, B, C and D. Okay. For one mole of monoatomic gas, right? The value of N is 1 and this is like monoatomic gas. So we can say that CV is going to be 3R by 2. Perfect. And this is the graph given to you, P0, P0 by 2, V0, 2, V0, 4, V0, PV graph, okay. And, and what does the option say is, and you have four options, perfect. So if we are going to calculate the work done from A to B to C to D, let's, let's divide the path in, in some fragments. So work done A, B, C, D will be nothing but work done A, B plus work done B, C plus work done C to D. Okay, okay. Let's calculate them one by one, right? So if I if I just first try and calculate work done in the process AB, right? So you know in PV curve, the work done is area under the curve. So work done will be this area, right? The yellow shaded portion. So if you just calculate, this is a rectangle length into breadth. So the length is P0 and the breadth is like 2 V0 minus V0 is V0. And see, A to B, V0 to 2 V0. That means it is the work of expansion. Work done by the gas is going to be negative. So minus P0, V0. You can also calculate with the formula that work done is minus P delta V. So pressure is minus P0. Delta V is 2 V0 minus V0. So 2 V0 minus V0. One and the same thing. This is going to be minus P0 V0. Both the ways, either graphically or, or by formula, the answer is coming out to be minus 
P naught V naught that is work done A B. Okay, fine. Let's talk about B C. Now B C is like what? A B was an isobaric process, right? This was an isobaric process. What is an isobaric process where the pressure is constant? Okay. Let's talk about B C. B to C. If you are moving, the the graph looks like an isothermal process, but we need to check it once. So at point B the pressure is P naught. At point C the pressure is P naught by two, and the volume. If you are uh, multiplying the pressure by half, the volume is getting doubled. V naught to two V naught. At point B the volume is V naught. At point C the volume is four V naught. Here it is two V naught. Here it is four V naught. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So doubling the volume, pressure is getting half. That means it is perfectly an isothermal process. Isothermal. And how do you calculate the work done for isothermal? Work done isothermal is nothing but minus n R T. Let's calculate in terms of volume. L n V two by V one. Okay. So the value for n is one minus one. R. Let's look at the options. R is okay. In some of the options, R is there. So for a while, let's keep R as it is. Temperature is T. Ln V two by V one, so C is four V naught, and V one is like two V naught. V naught V naught cancel four by two. So let's keep it as minus R T Ln two. Okay, okay. This was your work done for process C to D. Now we are left with process B to C. Sorry, this was my bad. I'm really sorry. This was process B to C. Now we are left with process C to D. Again, we can do it by Area under the curve. Let me draw it another way. This, yeah. So if you calculate work done from C to D, now this is like this is like what? Four V not to two V not. That means you are going to compress the system, right? So work done compression. Work done on the system is going to be positive. So let's let's see. So if I just calculate the P not by two length into breadth and Breadth is going to be four v naught minus two v naught. That is two v naught. Cancel, cancel. P naught, v naught. And obviously, this is going to be a positive work done. You can also calculate. You can check it with minus p delta v as well. The delta v is going to be minus two v naught this time. So minus minus will be plus, and p naught by two into two v naught is going to be again p naught v naught. Okay, fine. Now, if you just add all of them, so what do I see is work done in A B C D. Is coming out to be work done in A B process A B work done was minus P not V not plus work done B to C. Hmm, it was like minus R T L N two right and work done in process C D was coming out to be plus P not V not. So P not V not getting cancelled. The final answer is coming out to be minus R T L N two. Okay, match with the options. Option A clearly says. Minus R T L N two, so option A is going to be the right answer to this question. And with that, we close this question. Thank you. Yeah, so it's time to revise the formula for De Broglie's wavelength. Let's see what the question says. The mass of an electron is nine point one into ten to the power minus thirty one kg. Okay, this is the mass of the electron. If its kinetic energy is three into ten to the power minus twenty five joule. Okay, calculates its De Broglie wavelength. Okay, what do we know about the formula for De Broglie's wavelength? Lambda is h by p, right? That's what we know. And can I replace this p with m v? Okay, so the kinetic energy, the formula for kinetic energy of electron is half m v square, and I have to somehow introduce this kinetic energy into the formula of De Broglie's wavelength, right? So what I'm going to do is multiply. And divide with m, so this will become half m square v square by m, right? So can I can I just write m square v square as half m v whole square by m? So m v is nothing but your momentum. So this will become p square by two m. This is the value of kinetic energy, right? So from here I can say p is coming out to be nothing but under root of two m into kinetic energy. Okay, let's let's put this value over here. Uh, let me remove this part. So 
h by p will become h upon under root of the value of p is here 2m into kinetic energy. If I put this, now this expression looks simple and we have to put the values. The value of h is 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34, okay. Under root 2 into mass of electron is going to be 9.1. Everything is going to be in SI unit, right? 10 to the power minus 30. 1 into kinetic energy is given as 3 into 10 to the power minus 25 everything under the root okay so we have to solve this so let me first simplify this a bit so okay 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 can i just say that 6.6 .6. let me let me take 9.1 approximately as 9 right so this will simplify my calculation 9 under root of 9 is 3 under root 3 into 2 is 6 and numerator is minus 34, denominator is 10 to the power what? Uh, 25 and 31. 25, 31 is like 56, under root 56, 28. Okay, okay. So if I just cancel this part, minus 34, 8, minus 6. Wonderful. Okay, so I have to solve this further. Let me remove some part from here. Let me clear some space. So if I just do 6, this can be cancelled as 2.2. Okay, okay. Now, less job is left. 2.2, root 6, root 6. Root 4 is 2, root 9 is 3. In between them, root 6, that side, 2.4, approximately 2.4. Okay, if I take it 2.4 into 10 to the power minus 6. Okay, this is going to be like 22 by 24 will be like 11 by 12 okay and 11 by 12 is like what let me write it as let me let me do one thing let me write it as 110 by 12 into 10 to the power minus 7 okay this will a lot simple calculation so 110 12 into what 9 is 108 so 9.8 is like 2 20, 0, 2 is like 20 is 1. 9.01 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter. Let me remove this as well. So I get some space to write meter. Okay, okay. But I have to report in nanometer. Nanometer is what? 10 to the power minus 9. So if I just convert this into 10 to the power minus 9, this will be like 901 into 10 to the power minus 9 meter. And minus 9 meter will be replaced by nanometer. So, 901 nanometer is going to be the final answer. If you match with the options, A, 700, no, A, B, 800, no, not at all. Option C, very close to what we have calculated. Option C is 900 nanometer is going to be the right answer to this question. And with that, the visuals for this question are over. Thank you. Yeah, so here we have a beautiful reaction-based numerical. And let's see how we're going to solve it. What is the percentage of free SO3 in an oleum sample? What is basically oleum? Oleum is nothing but H2S2O7, right? Okay. Oleum sample that is labeled as 104.5% H2SO4. Okay. Okay. See, what does it mean is that in 104.5% H2SO4, you have 100 gram of oleum and 4.5 gram of water right see this so3 oleum reaction is part of the contact process if you have read it so contact process is basically the the manufacturing of h2so4 how do we do that okay okay so if if i just write the reaction how how you do this so so3 combines with water to form h2so4 this is the main reaction that we are talking about and in this 4.5 gram of water is given to us, right? And what else you have? See, if you add water to oleum H2S2O7, you create H2SO4. This is the final reaction of the contact process. And from this, we have figured out that we have 100 gram of oleum, that is H2S2O7, and we have 4.5 gram of water. This is how it is labeled, right? So, using this data, and this particular reaction, the, the basis of solving this question, 
we have to solve it further. I am looking for this, this mass of SO3, which is going to react with 4.5 gram of water. So if I just, if I just balance this reaction once, let me check. Sulfur is 1, oxygen 3, 4, 4, hydrogen. This reaction is already balanced. So if I just read the stoichiometry, 1 mole SO3 is going to react with 1 mole of water. So can I say that 1 mole water is going to react with 1 mole of SO3? Right. Okay. Okay. 1 mole water is nothing but if I convert it into mass, 18 gram of water is going to react with sulfur. 32, oxygen 3. 16 into 3 is 48, 32, 7, 8 to 10, 80 gram of SO3. If 18 gram water is going to react with 80 gram of SO3, then 4.5 gram of water just by using the unitary method 80 by 18 into 4.5. So 4.5 into 2, 9 into 2, 18. This will be like 4. 18 to 4 is nothing but 20 gram of SO3. Perfect. Nice. Okay. You have 100 gram oleum. You are going to calculate the percentage of free SO3. So the percentage of SO3 is coming out to be 20 by 100 into 100. So this is nothing but 20%. And option B for Bombay or B for Bengaluru or even B for Baiju's is going to be the right answer to this question. And with that, the visuals for this question are over. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So here we have a theoretical come conceptual question from gaseous states of matter. And let's let's enjoy the question all together. The statement says the RMS velocity, we have studied about three types of velocities. That is the RMS, that is root mean square, the MP, the most probable and the average velocity. In this particular question, we are talking about the RMS velocity. So the RMS velocity of hydrogen is root seven times the RMS velocity of nitrogen. Okay, let's let's write this. V RMS of hydrogen is root seven times the V RMS of nitrogen. Okay, this is fine. If T is the temperature of the gas, then what is the relation between the temperature of hydrogen and temperature of nitrogen? Okay, okay, okay. So what is the formula of VRMS? Let's let's write that formula first. This is under root, root mean square. What is the formula? 3RT by M. You should have these formulas on your tips, right? Okay. So if I just use this, I'll say that under root 3R temperature of hydrogen upon the molar mass of hydrogen. Although we used to put this in, in like... Uh, SI unit, but because it is going to be same on both the sides. So let me just put it as 2, right, is equal to root 7 into the VRMS of nitrogen, 3 R temperature of nitrogen upon the molar mass of nitrogen. And, and that has to be like 14 into 2, 28. Okay. Okay. This makes sense. Let me square on both the sides. So what I'm left with is 3 into R into temperature of hydrogen upon 2 is equal to 7 into 3 into R into temperature of nitrogen by 28. Now, this seems to be simple calculation. 4, 2, 3R with 3R. So, what I am left with is temperature of hydrogen is equal to temperature of nitrogen divided by 2. Okay. Now, the relation is temperature of hydrogen is equal to temperature of nitrogen. Not at all. Temperature of hydrogen is greater than temperature of nitrogen. Uh, if I say that temperature of nitrogen is 4, then hydrogen will come out to be 2. So, which one is greater, nitrogen or hydrogen? Answer is nitrogen. Incorrect option. Okay. So, temperature of hydrogen is less than temperature of nitrogen. Looking at these examples, I can say yes, option C is the right option. And temperature of hydrogen is root 7 times the temperature of nitrogen. Incorrect. So, I hope you can see that option C is the right answer to this question. And with that, we conclude this question. Thank you.